You are now watching Believe. Do you believe? Welcome to the Believe in USC football podcast. I'm your host, Kristen Lago, joined by my lovely co-host, Lindell White. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, we got some lovely news last night, big time yeah. news. So I'm feeling ecstatic. I know some of our fans out there pissed off, but listen, this is big time news. If we want to be the big dogs, this is something that we needed to do. So I'm happy about it. Now, if you live under a rock and you haven't heard about this college football news, USC and UCLA made the announcement yesterday that they will no longer be a part of the Pac-12 conference. They were accepted into the Big Ten conference. Of course, this doesn't actually begin until 2024, but it definitely took the college football world by storm. I want to get to you and your social media because I know you're very active on there with a lot of fans. <laughs> what were they telling you? What was that conversation like? So, so I had jumped on, you know, immediately and I was like, I don't see what the big deal is. You know, we've been kicking their ass, you know what I mean? <laughs> and naturally, you know, all the Ohio State fans come running out like, what are you talking about? We've dominated your conference for years. And I'm like, listen, again, maybe you guys don't understand how to read in the Big Ten, but let me explain it out black and white. USC is joining the Big Ten, not the whole Pac-12. So if you're doing numbers, you got to see what USC has done versus the Big 12. Okay, let me pull up the receipts. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, naturally I go to, you know, Google because Google tells you anything. And naturally I'm looking at some stats and it's like we're 69 or 62 and 29 versus this team or versus Big Ten. So we have like a 70% winning ratio versus these people. So it's like clearly we've been kicking y'all ass. And – um, I think like in the 2000s or something, we were 8-0. And, and then like from there, it was like maybe, I forget, like maybe 4-2 and two or something like that. But we have been beating up on these people for a very long time. And now we get to go to this conference and beat up on them every week. It makes me hella excited. I'm curious your take on, just because you've been around big game atmosphere, what do you think it's going to be like when it's USC, Michigan at Michigan, Ohio State coming out here at the Cali? What's that going to do for just the excitement, the atmosphere, the environment? It's crazy because I have a lot of friends that played on, you know, whether, whether it be Michigan, like Braylon Edwards, Jason Avant, they were my host, actually. I went on a trip to Michigan. Um, I got friends that went to Ohio State, Donnie Nicky, you know, um, uh, Maurice Claret, one of the names. There's a whole bunch of people I can name. Um, Penn State, um, one of my old coaches, uh, uh, I can't think of his name right now, but he uh, he was our lineman coach at uh, at a Tennessee Titans. He went to Penn State, so we used to make bets all the time, you know, because it was the Rose Bowl thing. And he used to have to bring my money in, sign, and he'd be like, uh, I can't believe you guys got us. And I'm like, no, man, you guys are our beat-up dolls. We know that, the, you know, the Big Ten and the Pac-10 have been, you know, having this Rose Bowl showdown for years, but it's always been out west. So now we get to go into the big house in Michigan. We we get to go to Penn State where it's the whiteout. You know, I've seen these games. I've seen it on TV, and, and it gets me excited when you see it. Um, there's nothing like it. So I'm, I can't wait to see this atmosphere. Uh, Michigan State, um, I don't know, Ohio State. It, it's going to be big time games, State, but they, yeah. right? But they also have to come, you know, back to the Coliseum. So you know, they get to see another hundred thousand rocking, you know, with a lot of tradition. So this is a, an exciting time around USC football. And I, I keep saying that, but it's, if, if you don't see it as a fan, then the, you know, Mike bone and what Lincoln, what they're making such huge splashes to try to bring it back that, you know, the recruiting is going to pick up. The kids are going to see that if you want to be the best, you play against the best and kids going to be like, Oh, it's a different conference. Now you get to play Michigan, Michigan state, Penn state, Ohio state, Iowa. Yep. <laughs> they're going to love it. Man. Um, I can't wait to honestly, one of my most, I can't wait to go to an Iowa USC game because I know that the children hospital the wave. Is, yeah. yeah. So one like, I'm so excited to see. Yes. I can't wait to see that. That's going to be really dope. That's going to probably be one of my, you know, bucket list games. First thing I do when we join. So I think it's just big for us, man. And if you're not excited right now for USC, then I don't think you're a real fan. And we got the chance to break all of this down even further with one of your former teammates, Sean Cody. Let's roll yeah. it up. All right, we are thrilled to welcome to our podcast. You are our very first guest, by the way. This is just episode two. So USC legend as well. I feel like I'm, I'm among great company here as a USC fan, an alum, an All-American, national champion, NFL vet, and still a very big part of the USC football program, Sean Cody. Thank you so much for being with us. 
Oh, thank you guys for having me. It's a, an honor to be on the show with you guys. I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say about the Trojans. You know, I'm doing the radio now for the team, and, and uh, any, any way I can get some more input, especially from a legend like Lindell White, you know, I look forward to listening to you guys. So I want to jump right into it because Lindell and I have been texting about this uh, huge news. I mean, when is USC ever short for news, right? right? Joining the Big Ten Conference. I think, first of all, I'd like to hear from both of you. Did you ever think that this was going to happen the way it did? Were you surprised? I'll let you go first, huh? Yeah, I was, I, I was blown away by the news. You know, I started getting texts in the morning about what was happening. I'm, I thought I was pretty glued in. I'm, I'm, I'm sure Lindell's got better links in than me, but I thought I was glued into what was happening. <laughs> And uh, all my sources were like, man, I'm blown away. I didn't know what was going on. So, yeah, it was uh, quite shocking news. I think if you've been watching the trajectory of what USC has been trying to do, with Mike Bone at the helm, and kind of, you know, what his forecasting is, what his projections are, he's been shooting for the moon and for the stars. And, and that's, you know, just what you can expect from Mike Bone. And, I, you know, my hat's off to him and Brandon Sosna for, you know, trying to get this thing together, Kara Holt, the president, and trying to, you know, Go after the best competition. Be in the best league, and uh, and and that's what they're doing. They're seeing. That I think you know SC hasn't been happy for a while, kind of in the Pac-12, and kind of handled how it's been handled. Uh, so this is a this is a huge move, and that's you know what I think we've come to expect from from Mike Bone and, and his staff. Yeah, I'm with you, Sean. Mike has been making a you know a lot of big dips and splashes. He came in um, when he first got in. You know, he he had a big group of us, about 25 of us, took it to a, a steakhouse. And kind of like asked us like what he thought you know could be the, the the trajectory of the USC program, and he listened to every last one of us. It's amazing that you know a guy that just comes in and has so much on his plate is able to do that, right? So then not only does he he you know he brings some of the old former guys back. He says he's gonna make a splash when it's time to you know make a coaching splash. He goes out and get Lincoln Riley, which is I honestly believe the best hire we could have made. Um, Lincoln's a the family guy. He's a he has the great looks. Um, you know what I'm saying? He knows what, what he's saying. He's had two number one draft picks overall. Um, so his track sheet is pretty much there. And he's a young guy. He's my age. It's crazy. We're both 38 years old. So it's, I think that he can be like our Joe Paul in a sense to being a coach for a very long time. Um, obviously, we don't want what comes with Joe Paul and all that bull crap. But uh, everybody knows what I'm saying. But, you know, we needed to make a splash. And Pac-12 wasn't doing it no more. If we keep hearing about the soft conference and, you know, we, we only win because we're out there, but people fail to realize, you know, when USC is at its top, we go around the world searching for games, whether it be Virginia Tech, whether we fly down to Auburn for our first game, whether we bring in Arkansas or, you know, whoever it may be, like we've dominated college football. So going over to this Big Ten, this is just going to be great for us because now we get to face, I, I say stiffer competition, but I mean, it's like, I mean, when you're USC, who cares? Because our season, usually we're lined up playing those great teams already. So we don't mind who we play anyway. I think a bit, a, oh, sorry. I think, Chris, a, a, a big part of it, I think, is the move that Texas and Oklahoma made, right, to the SEC and them kind of lining in there. And I think that started really the ball rolling on this whole thing is that, you know, if they're going to try to create this super conference in the SEC, how we combat that, how do we stay relative or uh, relevant in this in this new college, new age of college football. And I think one way was to do this kind of, you know, let's link up with, with the Big Ten. They got a number of, you know, great teams with great traditions in that conference. Just uh, bring two uh, of the powerhouses from the Pac-12 over and, and let's see how we can roll. And then kind of have that SEC Big Ten uh, battle of brewing uh, as it's coming up. <laughs> I love it, man. This is great for football. Okay, you both kind of mentioned it being great for football. I feel like a lot of mixed opinions, though, on the idea of these super conferences. As, like, two former college football players, what's your take on the direction we're seeing this go? I mean, it's all about money. We, we know that right now. And, you know, the SEC is a powerhouse when it comes to bringing in money. So when you – when you're looking at those teams joining the conferences, it's Texas and Oklahoma, two other, you know, powerhouses. So it's, it's coming to that. And if you, you know, if you're not, you know, in the future, so to say, then you're going to be left in the past. So we, I'm okay with it. You know what I mean? People got to look past the, if it's an easy schedule that you guys want and the easy path to the national championship, yes, do that. But I believe in competition and I, I strongly and firmly believe that that makes you better. So if we're playing these good teams or these great teams week in and week out, when it's time to go play, you know, the top four to, or the college playoffs, then we're going to be locked and loaded and ready. We, we, we've been played and been experienced. So, you know, I, I know for our fans, they're mixed emotions because they kind of want us to have that easy 
but I don't, I don't buy into it. Let's, let's go out there and bang with the teams that they say is the best Michigan's, the Michigan States, um, Penn States. It's not like we haven't beat up on them before. So let's keep, let's continue the tradition. Yeah. I, and I think there's some level of being progressive about it, right? We have to, we can, we're not stuck in the past. Let's, let's expand what we're, what we're trying to do. It's just, it's, it's, it's easy to get stuck in like, all right, I'm comfortable going up to the weekend for the weekend or for Cal and Stanford and all the old fans, you know, feel the nostalgia to doing that or playing the ducks or these kind of things. But the, the way football is going ahead, we would be out in front of the curve. And that's what I, 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 you know, I enjoy that progressive stance that SC is taking and, and say, Hey, we're going to jump out in front of this thing. Whoever wants to, to follow, let it come along, but we're going to be in the front leading it. And uh, that's the, that's the kind of, I think that's the kind of mentality you have. If you're, if you're one of the big dogs, Lindell knows if you're one yeah. of the big dogs, you got to lead the way, man. You don't want, you don't follow what people are doing. Hey, let's be the leaders here. Let's jump out. Let's shake it up. And I think that's what Mike Bone is, is, has been really progressive in what he's been trying to do. For sure. I'm with that. I got to ask you, the conversation surrounding USC leaving the Pac-12 conference has been a conversation that's been had for a number of years now, just with the amount of revenue they bring into the conference, the amount of success that they've seen versus the other Pac-12 schools. Did you think that UCLA would also make the journey with them? I mean, I know this is a USC podcast, but I mean, were you think- surprised that UCLA is kind of joining forces or not at all? Um, I think it, it's kind of like you had to do it. You know, it's like they didn't – they're another powerhouse, so to speak, because their basketball program is – they dominate in basketball. We got to be honest. So if you think about, like, who really runs the Pac-12, we know who what's going on. It's the two uh, UC – or the two uh, LA schools. Um, one just happened to be powder blue and soft. The other one, you know, cardinal and gold and a little tougher. But, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, it, it's okay. I'm glad we got our little brother coming along with us because it gives us somebody to beat up on even extra special still. <laughs> uh, that, uh, I mean, I can't beat that take. That's that's the take to have there, man. It, it, it's good, I think, to to keep that rivalry going uh, in, in, in our little, in our, in our city of Los Angeles. We get to keep that going. I, and I still think there's room for it. I mean, we're going to have out-of-conference games probably with Stanford's, probably maybe with the Ducks, depending on where they go, what they do. So I, I think there's still some room for some old rivalries we can have with some non-conference games. But when we get into that conference, man, it's going to be fun. I mean, I just can't wait to see Michigan in the Coliseum or going to the, oh going to the shoe for a game. I mean, the whiteout in Pennsylvania. When you go out to Penn State with the whiteout, man, yeah, I'm trying I mean, to see a, that. I think all the people who are, are sad about it need to, to look look at those kind of matchups that are coming up. I mean, imagine seeing the, the maze and gold out there with, with the Cardinal and gold. I mean, it's going to be so cool, man, to see those kind of matchups. And every week will seem like a, like a Rose Bowl experience, you know. So I think when you, when, when you get sad about, hey, not having to go to Corvallis and Oregon State, just think about the matchups I think we're, we're going to have in the future and how cool you're going to turn in every Saturday. You'll be excited to watch the U.S. football. And, and it's not like we still won't be, have Notre Dame. You know, it's like we, I feel like we still have Notre Dame on the schedule. We'll still have UCLA. So it's still going to be home. Like people that understand USC football, we're still going to have our two greatest rivalries. Of course, you miss, you know, like you said, the Stanfords and somewhat the Ducks and here and there. But it's like, hey, it's time to make a big splash. And if we're considering ourselves like the big dog or one of the big dogs, like I know we are, then this is this is exactly what we need to do. And it's easy we could talk about the Big Ten looking ahead two years, but there's also a lot of excitement building for their last two seasons here in the Pac-12, right? I yeah. would love to get both of y'all's take um, kind of now that we've gone through spring. We know what to look forward to two years from now, but I mean, what, we're two months away now from the first kickoff under the Lincoln-Riley era. What are you both looking forward to the most? I'm Sean. Yeah, you know, I'm asking. Sean's around the team a lot more than me. So yeah, what what do he got to say? He's the real link right there. Well, it was. I mean, I mean, it's, it's super. I think exciting. You know, the seasons we've had, and uh, you know how low we've kind of gone as a program in the last couple of years. You know, the every, attendance was down, and, and at times the place was a sad place to be at the Coliseum. You know, covering the game. So, and just to have the the, the splash hire and Lincoln Riley and the energy he's brought to the program, and what Mike Bone has to kind of give him him the resources to kind of build um, what he wants to build has been really exciting. I mean, just what, what, a couple of weeks ago, me and Lindell were helping out with, with, with some recruiting aspects along with Salute to Troy. So we're involved. He's getting the old guys involved. And, and, and the energy is at all time. I mean, but what it ultimately comes down to is it's going to be football, right? And, and Lincoln Riley is, is known for scoring points. So I think you're going to see some splash points. I think 
really the question mark is going to be uh, about the defense and what yeah. Alex Grinch can do on that side of the ball if they can get it done because it, usually when with those high powered offense it's hard for those defenses to hang on sometimes sometimes so it's I think that's really going to, where you're going to want to watch and, and see what's happened on that defensive side of the ball in these last two years in the Pac-12 here can they can we get can we get a Pac-12 title on the way out it's, I think it's really going to be dependent on how that de defense develops if they can get those big time recruits in to kind of sure up and uh, have some playmakers on that side of the ball. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think we did a, a, a tremendous job um, of bringing back some electricity, uh, you know, the, uh, around our atmosphere, especially with the Caleb Williams, Mario, and the Addison. We know, like you said, the offense is locked and loaded. Um, if you've seen Caleb play football last year, then you know he can play football. Um, we're, that's not something we're not really worried about. Um, Lincoln's an offensive guy, so I'm loving the points. I can't wait to put up points. Sean, you know this one. When we were playing, we used to, you know, we score 50, 60 points a game. But the thing was, we would score, but you guys go get the ball right back. Like, it, it wasn't like you guys had long drives or anything. You guys go, you know, get an interception or a fumble two plays into a drive. So we would have to run back out there and go right back on the offense. And we really didn't get a break. You know, people, people always say, like, you know, you didn't get the defense a break. But I was fortunate enough to play with, you know, guys like you, um, Fat Pat, <laughs> Lawrence Jackson, you know what I'm saying, Lofa Tatupu. Grudy Good, Bing, like I, I can keep naming, you know, but what I'm saying is you guys were a top defense, so it was easy for us to put up points. So I get what you're saying, you know, seeing what Grinch can do, because if he can turn them boys into some hounds and, you know, can create them turnovers, get that offense the ball, I honestly believe the sky is the limit, man. I know yeah. that once that, you know, the snowball, like if it gets rolling downhill, you know, when you start believing anything's possible, man, and that's how it was with us and Pete. They brought you in. You was the number one recruit in the nation. People don't know this. <laughs> you were that guy. And I remember, like, I remember having your section. You think it's a game, Sean. Like, I remember running out and you had your – it was so many people. They didn't care where they sat to go see Sean Cody play football. So once we can get those guys, you know, around L.A., you know, like, with your kind of, you know, how you're built and, you know, start bringing these guys back in from the inner city, I really believe that it's going to change. And I think Lincoln's the guy for that. And I, I think there's an aspect of what you're talking about. It's this complementary football, right? You have you have your defense. Your offense goes out there and puts points on the board, and then the defense, our job is to get you guys the ball the back because we know that, you know, we're going to go up to Big Mike and for a catch. We're going to get you on the ball, and you guys will burn some clock up for us. We get a little rest on the side and be ready to go. And, and, and we you know, we wanted to get you the ball back on the field as fast as we can. So it's, it's really – I think that's what's really been lacking from USC football. It's that complementary side. Yeah, we've, we've seen off, uh, offenses be successful at USC – but that really that defensive side has been, kind of been missing. That, that portion has been missing for a little bit. It's those nasties, big nasty guys that's tearing it up, those linebackers, that, that box, those box players that I think we're missing. The reason why we haven't played that kind of stellar defense in the last maybe, maybe close to 10 years. So it's, it, I think that piece is something they got to solve. And I, hopefully Alex Grinch is the guy to get it done. It sounds like he's excited with Dante Williams and, and Sean Nua and Brian Odom at the linebacker coach, Roy Manning coaching those outside guys. So it's going to be – it should be – that's, that's what I'm excited. You know me, Linda. Yeah. I'm excited about watching that defense. I think Lincoln Riley's going to do a tremendous job. I mean, you mentioned all the crazy weapons they got on offense. And Mario yeah. Williams. They just added Addison at, at wide receiver and, and Caleb Williams. So it's going to be fun to watch them. But I think if you really deep, deep, deep down dig into this team, it's going to be on that defensive side of the ball. How fast can they figure it out and, and, and complement the offense? Yes, sir. Yes, man. You said it best. Were y'all both at uh, Salute to Troy? This is maybe like two weeks ago. Okay, yes, that's what I thought. I have to say, so my mom FaceTimes me from the event. My mom has been a season ticket holder for the last 20 years. Oh, so yeah. she's like FaceTiming me. Kristen, oh my God, all the old players are here. I'm so excited. <laughs> and it kind of reminded me, and I also told her you were both going to be on the podcast today. And she's like, call me right after. I need to hear about it. <laughs> so she's like an older USC fan from the glory days of USC football. And it just reminds me, I'd love to get your take. I feel like when I was a kid, it was almost like you guys were celebrities because USC football was that big in the LA culture. Do you feel like we're almost getting back to that with the excitement that this new program is bringing where, I mean, it's yes. like USC is the place to be now. Was it like that back then? Is it like that more now? Do you see it in the program? When we was coming to USC, um, I know it was like they won, they won a Utah Bowl and then they had run the Orange Bowl. So it was like the beginning of like, it was, it was something, you know, it was a feeling of something. But then I remember like I, we went to a all American bowl. 
I said this story at the Salute Detroit. And I remember, like, honestly seeing it was me, Reggie, Whitney, Steve, um, Sam Baker, Chris Baird, uh, Ryan Khalil, like Thomas Williams. It was literally like 15 or 16 of us. And they all was committed to USC. And I was just looking around like if all these top, you know, recruits are coming to USC, then I know we're going to be something special. Little did I know we'll run off, you know, 35 or, you know, 40 or whatever the game, you know, like something like that, 39 straight or something like that. But you can feel something around USC right now. It, it, USC is not like a school that you go to to just think it's it's just normal. USC is a, a, a Holly. It's Hollywood. If you be, if you're special there, everybody around the world will know exactly who you are. So, do you really consider you know Tuscaloosa or even Ann Arbor the same place? No, it's not the same. Like when you go to Hollywood, you know you're in something special. So, and I'm and I'm getting that feeling again, and I'm excited. I'm really excited because. USC was a place to go to school back when we were playing. That was the only place. I remember having, you know, the ADs and I mean, or the Adrian Petersons and the CJ Spillers. Like, we had all these top recruits coming out there, and they were like, oh, we can't come because of oh, Reggie's there, or Lindell's there, or they got Stefan coming, or rest in peace, Joe McKnight was still there. Like, yeah, we were getting all the great guys. So that's exactly where we're getting back to, and I can't wait. Yeah, LA is a special place, you know. If you can get start getting it rolling here, you know, uh, it, it was a, uh, ultimately a different time in, in LA history with no no NFL teams. And we were kind of the big dog in town, so maybe it never gets to that kind of fever pitch of, you know, when Lindell and Reggie and Matt were winning Heisman's and like those kind of. I mean, who knows if it ever gets back to that type because that was just a crazy period with no NFL team in Los Angeles. The Lakers were doing it, SC was doing it. So I mean, just a crazy period. But I do think you can draw some parallels. Now it's gonna take it takes winning, right? That's right. that's the ultimate that's the that's the ultimate thing. It's <laughs> it's gonna take winning. All this lip service in the off season about how great workouts are and how great guys look uh, off the field or not during games. It, it's all hype, but so it's gonna take winning. But I can draw a lot of parallels of like when Pete started and when Lincoln started and the kind of the aura those guys have around them and what they what their vision is for the team and how excited they are and you know having a team that's kind of been in the doldrums for a little bit and trying to turn that corner and, and, and get, so you can, I think you can kind of see those parallels, probably why people are excited. So it's, it's, it, it, it is interesting. It is fun. But like I said, it's going to take some W's and I think Lincoln Riley knows that. And no matter what, you know, you gotta, you gotta win ball games to get LA excited. For sure. Before we let you go, because I know you are super busy, Sean, I want to <laughs> get y'all to kind of spill the tea a little bit about any funny anecdotal stories from when y'all were at USC? Because um, I was just a, a little fan back then. I don't know what was going on on the field behind closed door. I'm just curious if there's any moments that stick out in your memory, anything like that, that we can give the fans that have been around some some inside scoop. Yeah, Sean, give us something. Come on, man. I got, I got something, man. Uh, you know, I, I, I thought about, you know, thinking about playing with Lindell, and I remember a young – whippersnapper coming in man and this guy was man just you know I mean you guys know Lindell he's just talking the whole time and here's this young kid just talking 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 like man this kid is he, he's got it all figured out already and then he put the pads on and he was all business man I remember Lindell getting out there and I, I think when I when I think of Lindell and when you think of former players when I think about former players usually from the locker room right you know obviously Lindell was a killer on the field and he backed up all the words that young whippersnapper came in talking and I was like man this guy really put out there but the locker room Lindell for me was always the guy who was like linked to he had the most the best ear for like the hip-hop that was coming out so Lindell had was always on the whenever the, the best stuff was coming out so I really like Lil Wayne was like starting to blow up and, and Lindell would have Lil Wayne going. He'd be rhyming these verses in the locker room like, damn, I never heard of me Lil Wayne. This, and, and he's putting me on this. This is pretty good. Lindell, and then, and then he's on Jay-Z's thing. And I was like, damn, Lindell's, he's got his ear plugged to this music stuff. So he was, uh, he's always, he was always dropping knowledge in the locker room about rap and, and keeping us plugged into what was, what was cool, even for an old guy like me who, who, who thought uh, MC Hammer was still cool. So uh, Lindell, was, I always, I thank you for always stepping up my music uh, collection, Lindell. You know, it's crazy, that man. That was right when the iPad, right when the iPod was dropping. Yeah, the little, too. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's crazy, Sean. I was talking to John Walk, man. And John, you know, because John Walk was dancing all the time back then. And he was just like, man, you know what, bro? 
I remember you put us on Lil Wayne back then. You was like, guess nobody in the South, we were so hyphy and everything was such about yeah, the hyphy yeah, yeah, yeah. back then that, you know, I try to put on Lil Wayne and T.I. And they're like, man, who are these old country ass rappers? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> like, you know, it blows up and they're like, oh yeah, well, Lindell put us on that. So I appreciate that, man. You know, and you know, I used to hang out with Snoop. So Snoop used to always, you know, have on some type of music. So I, I give a shout yeah. out to that too, man. <laughs> Lindo, you, you don't have any Sean Cody stories for us? Well, Sean, Sean Cody was a legend on <laughs> campus. Like, we talk about, like, Matt oh. Leinert or, or, like, Reggie Bush and those guys. Before, like, I – before Reggie or Matt became those guys, Sean was already those guys. Like, you got to think he's from, like, East L.A. He's out there running around. <laughs> so, all the – I don't know if I – I don't want to say – I can't I – he's a – you know, he got a girlfriend and stuff now, but – if you don't think that, you know, he had, you know, all the ladies, yeah, right. Sean Cody, we called him the machine for a reason. <laughs> SC the machine. <laughs> yeah, I ain't going gonna, gonna to say nothing else. I ain't going to get him in trouble. <laughs> well, Sean, thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure we'll be checking back in with you throughout the season. I know we're all looking forward to it. And now I guess we can call ourselves Big Ten fans. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm already starting to research the Big Ten as we speak, man. It, we got a, I got a lot of research for the season. I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say every week or however often you guys do your podcast. And I'll, I'll be tuning in and watching you guys. So good luck to you guys and uh, fight on. Hey, hey, Sean, the only research you're going to have to do on them is Ohio State, bro. That conference is trash, man. Jim, Bar <laughs> Jim Harbaugh had one good season in the last 12 years. I don't even know. Like, they, come on. Bro, Northwest. There we go. That's the Lindell we used to get. That was that Illinois. was the young whippersnapper I was talking about coming in. Because listen, bro, what are we? Are we are we talking about like little league football? Are we talking about <laughs> Purdue, Illinois? Come on, man. It's y'all gotta be kidding me. Oh man, I appreciate you coming on, big bro. Thank you. Him. Yes, sir, you man. I'll see you soon, baby. Fight on. And one of the reasons I love doing this podcast with you is because you have all the inside scoop to all these players, these legends that I grew up watching. And it's really cool yeah. to see kind of the relationship that you still have with all of them. Yeah. Um, it's crazy because when you, when you first check into USC and you meet all these guys, you don't really realize the impact they'll have on your life um, further down, you know, like, uh, and these guys have been the ultimate big brothers um you can call on these guys when you need them whether it's the podcast whether you need to come to their house and stay the night maybe you need to borrow a car it's like whenever I call on one of these guys for my team um they find a way and when they said that you know the the Trojans is a brotherhood they really meant that so I call Sean Cody up and I'm like hey can you come on the podcast he's like what up anything you need I'm like I only need you for 10 15 he's like I don't care how long you need me just you know send me the info I'll be there so I'm truly, you know, I'm humbled by that because these guys have, you know, a lot going on in their lives. So stop, stop what they're doing and join the podcast for us. Um, you know, I love them and I, I'm, I'm truly appreciative for sure. And one last thing I want to hit on with that before we wrap this episode is that I think as a fan, as a reporter for a long time, there was so much news about how, you know, a lot of these old, older players, not old, I'm not calling you old, <laughs> older players weren't around the program during the time where it wasn't as low, whether that's because of the program or or not, but now we're seeing so many come back and be yeah. a part of it again. I guess, what has that been like for you seeing so many greats come back and what does that do for the players coming in? Well, um, I mean, I gotta give a shout out to Mike, uh, you know, our AD. He has done a tremendous, amazing job on reconnecting. The first thing he did was, you know, brought back former players. And it wasn't just from the 2003 to 2006. It was from all age groups, you know, whether it be the ADs, you know, Willie Max, the Marcus Alice. They, they found a way to reconnect with all these guys and bring them back. So I give a big, huge shout out to Mike, first of all, because he was the guy that, you know, gave the extended hand or, you know, the olive branch rather. But um, what's crazy is that, you know, we had a – some coaches you know that came through this thing and they thought that they probably could win based on our success you know but without bringing us back yeah. it's crazy I met some of these kids whether it be Caleb and Addison and um, Leak like you know, they understand the football and they're like man I used to watch you whether they were four or five six years old and they we watched these tapes they watched us you know what I mean and they're like man I'm, I'm happy I get to finally meet you so, you know, like we, we, we play a huge role in that. And obviously Lincoln and, and, you know, Mike seen that and they're bringing us back. And we are 
excited to come back because we know that USC is a is, is is a big dog and we need to get back to big dog status. So whatever we need to do as, you know, former players, whether it's Matt Liner, you know, like Sean Cody's, um, Willie Max, myself, um, you know, we, Reggie, Reggie, we, we coming for you. Yeah, we coming, yeah. you know, whether it be Reggie, you know, these kids, that's one guy that they adore. So when they could meet him, talk to him, you know, see him, it changes the game. So I'm, I'm excited for our coaching staff and that they, you know, understood that. And that was one of the main things that they focused on. And I really believe they'll have a lot of success because of that. Well, lots of excitement already. We're only in episode two, and there's already been two bombs that we've had to discuss with the hiring. <laughs> you can really know the movement into the Big Ten. So I am yes. keep your phone on for what comes next. Keep your eyes tuned in. I'm excited to see what all the fans throw at you as well. I love going back and forth with all your Twitter. Yeah, I love it too. Y'all, y'all excite me. I have nothing else to do, so I'm. I got Twitter fingers today. I got time today. <laughs> you heard him. Get to Twitter. Hit up Lindell. Also go online, follow us on our podcast, anywhere you can get your podcast, whether that's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, the like, stay with us all season long. We're two months away from football. So I can't wait. Let's go. Wait. Fight on, baby. Stay with us. And as always, fight on. <laughs>